Guys, welcome to a classic film review of 1976's Yakuza Graveyard. Uh, the tale of an almost dirty Harry-like cop and how he becomes embroiled in a vicious gang war between Osaka's two biggest crime families, uh, whilst also allowing his unorthodox police methods to drag him into a position uh, where he straddles the line between good and evil. Now this beauty is from acclaimed filmmaker Kinji Fukasaku who directed the excellent Battles Without Honour and Humanity or Yakuza Papers series in the early 70s but is probably most famous for 2000's insane Battle Royale. Uh, here also his eye for snapshot violence and zany action sequences in full effect. Uh, let's take a look. So on the surface, Yakuza Graveyard might seem like the standard cops and robbers tale, uh, complete with cop who doesn't play by the rules, um, his crooked superiors, uh, throwing a femme fatale, um, what he has the usual recipe for Fukusaku's brand of gritty thriller. Um, and what makes this film stand out though is the odd relationships that everyone has to one another. Now it feels like a cliche to say this, but there really is no black and white here, no real right and wrong on display. Uh, that really is the case. Now Tetsuya Watari's Osaka cop Koroiwa is a results driven madman. Uh, he wants results and justice and will crack as many heads as he needs to to achieve this. Uh, much to the outrage of his superiors who are by no means above board themselves by the way. Now, Koroiwa is a, a complex character uh, whose private life's an absolute mess. Uh, his girlfriend is a prostitute whose husband he shot dead years earlier. Uh, his home is a, a tiny apartment that looks like a bombsite, uh, and he pretty much takes the frustrations of his life out on criminals, um, as well as other cops and, well, <laughs> anyone really. <laughs> Um, he doesn't help himself either by getting romantically involved with the wife uh, of an imprisoned Yakuza boss uh, and befriending a Yakuza lunatic uh, as the two share a mutual respect for each other's ethics. Um, I think De Niro and Pacino in Heat for a, a little comparison. <laughs> Now, even though Tetsuya Watari plays his unhinged cop with a great savagery, uh, ready to punch anyone who even slightly annoys him, he's also shown to have compassion for the unfortunate people he meets. Uh, once he's dumped his drugged-up prostitute girlfriend, he still sends her money to help her buy the bar that she's always wanted. Uh, and even though they try and kill him, he still helps out a couple of idiotic low-life thugs who are being set up to take the blame for a shooting. Now, the intricacies of the story I'll leave for you to discover... Uh, and in all honesty, some of its confused plotting left me a little bit lost and may require a second viewing to fully appreciate. Uh, one of the aspects of the story that I do enjoy is that there's these warring Yakuza factions on either side uh, and the police force act as the moderator, the middleman uh, between the two. And um, with a situation like that, it's no wonder the lines can become blurred, um, especially when that much money and power are at stake. Now I have to mention one of my favourite aspects of Yakuza Graveyard which is it's sheer balls to the wall filmmaking style. But first, guys the team at Radiance Films were kind enough to send me a copy of uh, Yakuza Graveyard to check out. Now I'd never seen the film before but I am a fan of Kinji Fukasaku and his Yakuza Papers series and I'm certainly going to hunt down some of his other work. Uh, now this disc houses some great goodies. Uh, my favourite special feature being a visual essay by critic Tom Mez on Meiko Kaji and Kinji Fukasaku's collaborations. Uh, it's titled Rage and the Passion and it's great stuff. Now the disc's limited to 3,000 copies and will come with some awesome reversible artwork. Um, I'll link the Radiance website below because it's full of all kinds of great releases just like this one. Now there's a handheld immediacy to the action in Yakuza Graveyard that's one of my favourite aspects of it. Um, it's certainly by no means a tidily framed movie, especially in its action sequences where all of a sudden the camera seems to have a mind of its own and is not only thrown into the action, uh, but flips and tips along with the bodies that are flying on screen. And you can certainly assume that Gareth Evans was influenced by this style whilst making his raid movies. <laughs> So 
So my personal experience of Japanese action cinema uh, such as this is that a balance is always attempted between the bullets and the head crunching action and some soul searching drama um, or melodrama in a few cases. Uh, and Yakuza Graveyard really wants you to feel empathy for its characters and their choices. Uh, the film uses flashbacks or adds solemn conversations about social struggles into its rare moments of calm. Uh, and maybe these are moments when the plot threatens to bog itself down a bit. This is only a 97 minute movie, by the way. Now, if the word Yakuza conjures up images of ancient Japan and swords and honor, etc., then Yakuza Graveyard couldn't really be further from that. <laughs> One of its themes is of the elderly Yakuza bosses having to give way to their younger generation, um, a generation who have no respect and no honour as far as they're concerned. Um, it seems modern life has ground everyone down. Uh, every guy is a, a violent, whiskey-guzzling sociopath and every woman's either an ex-junkie or an ex-prostitute or both. Uh, but you still root for them to get a break. Now, Yakuza Graveyard also has an excellent surprise, stick-it-to-the-man closing shot that shows that our broken cop is defiant right up until those closing credits. Go check it out.